Hello again. My cat says hi too. <laughs> Mine likes to say hi when I'm on meetings generally, yeah. She's been like really chatty lately. Oh, she's leaving. <laughs> My rule is if she makes a, a sound while I'm in a meeting, she has to go on camera. Yeah, but she's, that's fair. She's elusive today. <laughs> Hello, uh, Benoit, Rob, and I assume Lee. Yes, although I'm going to leave my video off today because I'm sick today and kind of a mess. Fair. Me, me also. I already hear that. Uh, we are waiting for two more people, I think. Matt and... Oh, no, there's Matt. Just you. Just you. Just mission. Or is that all? Uh, it seems like the uh, the agenda's only got two topics on it, and each of them are two minute like announcements. So uh, <laughs> uh, I guess it doesn't make sense to wait around for too long. Yeah, let's do a quick assess and see if there's anything we're missing. Um, CFPs. Yeah, let's talk about CFPs. And... I guess the other thing we're talking about is TSC voting process, but that looks like maybe it's stuck on me. I'll have to refresh myself on that. Um, all right, folks, we'll kick things off and hopefully we catch Yuri when he's able to join. Uh, so welcome everybody. It is May, holy moly. Um, but of course, everyone joining here, we agree to spec membership agreement, participation guidelines, contribution guide, and code of conduct. Um, as we usually do, we're going to go around and um, have everyone state their name and affiliation, uh, which will help out for note taking in the recording. Uh, we'll go through in the order that is listed in the attendee sheet and if you're not in there yet send a pull request and if we have someone listed there who's not on the call yet we'll just skip over um i'm at the top of that list of hello everyone my name is lee hi everyone i'm benji hey i'm benoit from apollo hey everybody i'm jeff from apollo Matt, you're on, I think. Matt, can you hear us? I guess let's get Matt. I'm Rob from First Dibs. And we're, oh. Are you joined just in time or doing intros? Hi, everyone. Uh, do we miss anyone? We missed Yakov. Which, Yakov, let us know if you have audio. All 
All right, perhaps not. Um, all right, welcome all. Um, as Benji was saying, quick review of our agenda. We have two major stuff to dig into, which are both GraphQL JS topics. Um, we should, of course, re also repeat the thing we've been saying, which is GraphQL JS needs more dedicated support. And um, so if anyone from this group of people wants to volunteer more time and attention to helping the GraphQL JS project, that would be awesome. Um, in particular, I know um, Yakov has been quite busy on one of the branches there. Rob, you've weighed in at times. Matt, you've weighed in at times. Uh, and Yuri, many folks from your team have weighed in at times. Uh, so Benji and I may come knocking to ask you all for some thoughts and ideas on how we can get GraphQL.js into um, a better maintained state. Um, but that's all the prelude. I will pass us on to the actual topics to Benji. Thanks. Um... Okay, so this is really just an announcement. Um, so we've been doing the the GraphQL JS uh, working groups are now running again monthly. Um, so there have been a few discussions there. Uh, one of them is not my topic. It's just one that I'm representing for someone who can't make it today. Um, but essentially, there was a change made in GraphQL JS a while back to do with detection of process.env.nodeEnv, i.e. to know whether you're in production mode or development mode. Um, and specifically, this relates to uh, the instance of checks. Uh, anyone who's familiar with the Node ecosystem probably knows of the dual package hazard, especially with the common JS and ESM, which makes it even worse. Um, and we have checks uh, in GraphQL, which indicate whether it looks like you're using a thing that's come from a different version in memory of GraphQL JS. Um, we turn those off in production because uh, they're noisy, uh, I guess. Anyway, the detection that we had in place was fine, but caused problems for certain bundlers or certain environments. We then changed that. Uh, which was then fine for those new environments, but also broke some of the old environments. Hooray. Um, so at the moment, we're discussing how best to fix this so that we don't, so that we actually undo the breaking change that we did, whilst also keeping it working for everyone else. Um, so there's a number of different uh, solutions proposed for that. Anyone who is particularly familiar with this topic or has particular... Um, interest in it and making sure that their particular projects don't break, please weigh in on that issue. Uh, it's GraphQLJS issue number 4075, uh, which I will paste into the chat. Um, we are at our next GraphQLJS working group. We're going to aim to make a decision on this front, and then we're going to pick one of them, and then that one's going to ship. So. Uh, if you don't want that version to ship, whatever it may be, which we don't know yet, um, please weigh in. Um, yeah, that's me done for that one. Uh, Jeff, do you want to represent your one? Sure, absolutely. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Lens opened this um, uh, this issue on GraphQL JS as well. Um, and there's even a handy dandy template you can use to paste in. Basically, if you're using GraphQL JS and, um, and anything that you're that you're working on, um, we want to know um, where you import it from in your library, and if you're using deep imports, uh, why are you using them? Um, and the idea here is just to make sure that we're expressing um, the exports uh, field in. The package JSON uh, properly, and so um, we're not breaking any existing use cases there. But of course, we will know that partially through automated means. Obviously, we could try to um, to do a, a nice scour of GitHub to figure out what's uh, what's being used and where. Uh, but there's no substitute for good old fashioned feedback. Um, so please do uh, take a moment to. Um, look at your projects, see where you're importing uh, from the GraphQL JS package, and go ahead and just paste this handy dandy script into here. It should take you no longer than a few minutes to, to get it done. And that will help us just identify and help Lens identify what, what the um, 
uh, what the potential impact is and how we can express uh, exports in, in a way that doesn't break existing use cases for um, for this uh, for this proposal. If I'm missing anything there, uh, Benji, from what we talked about in the working group, let me know. Otherwise, I think that captures it here. Uh, basically, just it's homework for everybody, but it's hopefully an easy A. No, I think that about covers it. Um, you mentioned a script, but I don't see any script. Apologies, that was a clumsy way to say a copy paste. Like there's a copy paste field, like a, like a script, like as in just copy it in and Template, fill in the blanks yeah. there. Apologies, template would be the better word. Thank you. Um, that's the one. Excellent. Um, yeah, that one I suspect will be a bit challenging because GraphQL JS has been in existence for quite some time and has had this kind of pervasive exports everything kind of behavior, uh, which many take advantage of. The issue, um, to be clear, relates to the subpath exports, uh, which isn't technically a public interface. Um, and so we'd like to make certain parts of that more explicitly public uh, if we yeah. need to, using the new uh, exports field that Node.js has added support for. Yeah. Awesome. We we might have to export, we still have an export for all of the things that we want to be internal, but have them like have an internal, like GraphQL slash internal exports for all of them. Yeah, I think that that's uh, a really good idea. And if we do that, it means that people can still use them, but it's their fault when it breaks in an update. <laughs> It makes sense. Um, also, also not to add more work, but uh, it would be really, really useful if there was a script that you can apply on upgrade to like fix all your package imports, because I imagine that having something like that would ease adoption of a version bump. Another great. great idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Like a code mod or something. Um, all right, well, let's tick through a couple additional topics that aren't on the agenda. Um, I will pull one up. I want to talk about TSC voting process since half this group is in the TSC and the other half is cares about it. Um, I'm going to drop a link in the chat since we don't have it directly in the agenda file. Uh, I'll try to amend that after the fact to remind ourselves that we talked about this. Uh, I got some feedback from some folks on the TSC a couple of weeks ago uh, after a handful of us met that our voting process could be more detailed out so that when we want to do a quick vote, uh, we make sure that we ascribe to some sort of predictable you know, steps that we use. Uh, most of this is stuff that we usually do anyway, but it's always great to capture it. Um, Yvonne has had some excellent feedback here that I'm still digesting. I haven't had a chance to incorporate his feedback yet. This is really just mostly a call for attention to this. Um, that if you care about the way in which major decisions are getting made um, and you want to see us have a open voting process, that the intent is for this to be terse, but still quite good. Um, and so I'm looking for feedback. Uh, I appreciate Yvonne's feedback and other folks who want to weigh in and add feedback would be appreciated as well. Um, I'll give you the very high level, just so you don't have to like read it live while we're talking about it, um, which is just like we already have the definition of what a vote is and how a vote gets taken. But the thing that we had not done yet is explicitly call out phases where there's first a phase where we introduce the concept of a thing that's going to get voted on. Then there's a phase where there's the vote that's actually taking place. And then there's a final phase where there's a conclusion and a share back. 
And then there's sort of rules defined for how each of those different phases should occur. Um, most of Avon's feedback has been on this first phase of like setting up the context that begins, kicks off a vote, um, which has been quite helpful. Um, but if other folks want to take a look at that and weigh in, I think that would be quite good. And the last thing that we should talk about is GraphQL comp and the CFP process. Um, Benji, do you want to talk about that? Uh, sure. Hey everyone, GraphQL Conf is going ahead again. Hooray! Um, it's going to be in September. Um, I think I may have mentioned this last month. Um, but CFP is now open. Um, and in fact, it is not open for much longer, three weeks, but we all know how long it takes to, to get a CFP together. Um, that means by the time we have our next primary meeting, CFP will be closed. So please, if you would like to speak at GraphQL Conf, please submit a CFP. We'd love to hear from you. If you have ideas for a talk, but you're not sure if it's quite the right thing, or you want help like honing your pitch, um, by all means, reach out to myself uh, or many other people I think would also make themselves uh, available for this. Um, and yeah, we can we can give you some feedback, help you hone your pitch and so on. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a, a great conference, I hope. So please get involved. Um, yeah, I'll go one step further than that, which is not just if you're interested, be interested, please talk. Um, you know, each each conference has its own sort of vibe and theme and GraphQL Conf's vibe and theme is core community and core project progress, which means the folks who regularly attend these calls have a huge amount of context on what's going on and the ability to wrap that up and share it with a broader set of people is incredibly valuable. Uh, we just don't talk publicly enough about all the work that we do. And that's like the primary value we get out of GraphQL Conf. And folks want to hear from, from this crew in particular. Um, so especially if you are working on, have worked on, uh, or are thinking of working on proposals, those are awesome topic ideas. Um, and please write CFPs. Also, if you've got teammates, coworkers, or others who've been working alongside you or doing something interesting with GraphQL, you should encourage them to submit a CFP as well. Um, so that's a little bit of a call to action for each of you to take back. And um, just to mention how effective these, these talks can be, um, Steve and Spalding did a talk last year at GraphQL Conf on nullability. And though we had spoken about nullability a lot up until that point, like all of us, multiple times, um, that conversation and the conversations around it actually sparked a whole number of ideas in the nullability thing that have led to more recent proposals, ultimately. Um, so even if you think that we've discussed things to death at the working group, it's still worth doing a talk about them. And we'd love to hear those talks, even if we've been the ones discussing it with you. So yeah, please definitely submit a CFP. That was an awesome example. Yeah, uh, that br breathed a little bit of new life into that direction, gave us a new angle to take on it, which was super cool. Um, all right, relatively quick run through our agenda today. Uh, anything else? we haven't talked about that's on anybody's mind? Uh, I'd like to remind everyone that we have the GraphQL grant program. So if there is something that you've been looking to do or uh, looking to finish some RFC work, uh, you know, a change to the GraphQL website, maybe a documentation article that we could have there, uh, any number of things like that that all contribute to the GraphQL Foundation projects, uh, please uh, either submit a application to get some funding to help you to find time to do that. Uh, or if you need some help, you can always reach out to me, probably Lee, Jory, a um, number of other people. So yeah, please use that resource if you need it, if it will help you to find the time to progress these things. Um, Lee, so yeah. think back to the TSC topic, uh, I think one thing that would be an interesting thing to address would be deciding what actually a vote is. For example, an opinion poll isn't necessarily a vote, uh, but it does often take the form of a vote. 
Um, often you might have an opinion poll to see whether something is worth voting on, for example. Um, so some clarity around that might might be worthwhile, but I have no idea how to word that. That's a great point. Uh, I agree. Yeah, a vote is a thing that results in like a agreed upon concrete action, which is different from an opinion poll for sure. Um, on the grant program, uh, two things in particular that I think I'm very excited to see our, us use the grant program for. One is core project main maintenance. Um, we were, I was mentioning before about how GraphQL JS needs a little bit more direct support from core maintainers. That's definitely something that I see um, excellent use of the grant program being used for. Um, so if you or somebody you know you think would be a good fit there, uh, we've, we've got some grant money to back it up. The other is core documentation. I think our documentation has been in a bit of a middling state for a long time. Uh, and that is not always easy to do. And so in particular, if you know folks in your world who are technical writers, um, dev advocates, et cetera, who are looking for a side gig uh, between things or otherwise interested in learning more about GraphQL, that might be an awesome way to encourage new people to show up into our core community um, and to use the grant program as a way to uh, make sure that they get compensated for serious contribution. And further, to tie those two things together, uh, if you'd like to help on GraphQL.js, but you're not sure that you can yet, then working on the documentation for GraphQL.js will make you more familiar with the project and will also improve it for everyone else as well. So a great way to uh, get your feet wet. Yeah, win-win. Um, anything else on anybody's mind they want to talk about? Um, for GraphQL Conf, um, any interest, um, like I know the CFP is open for um, for individual talks and things like that. I'm curious if there's, um, and maybe this is something we can, you know, kind of do a longer burn on, but like if there are like panels or anything like that that we could convene, like there's been a lot of um, really great work happening um, in a variety of different places with like maintainers from across the ecosystem. Um, and uh, I'm wondering if like, like how do we submit panels or like, like potential panel talks? Like one of the things that might be interesting is to like convene um, different GraphQL uh, open source client maintainers. I think that would be an interesting kind of like theme idea, right? Um, uh, just, just, a is there like a, a explicit, I, I'm getting together my individual talk, but is there also like ways for the community to propose like panel talks or things like that, or discussions? I really like that. Um, yeah, I feel like our CFP should be explicit that that kind of thing is allowed. Uh, mm. or another way to say that is like, we would accept a CFP from an individual. We would accept a CFP from a group, you know, if someone says this is a pair of people who are going to give a talk on a thing, which we had some cases of that last year. And if someone wanted to say, this is going to be a group presentation and it's in the form of a panel, I'll moderate. And like, here's the thing we want to talk about. Heck yeah. that I think that would be a cool. really awesome CFP to provide. Uh, and so even if it's the form of like, hey, here's a panel that I would really like to be on. I don't know who's going to moderate it, but this is a thing that I'd like to see. Um, that's fine too. You know, I think we can figure out how to run it to ground. But um, certainly if there's one you're like, ah, oh, this would be awesome one for me to, to moderate. And here's the folks I want to invite to come do it with me. Um, that would be excellent. Excellent CFP. Okay. 100% cool. agree. Um, I've also just logged into the CFP process. And yes, you can submit a panel discussion directly. Um, it would be great to have the, the moderator submit the discussion. Um, and if this is something that you want to do or you want to help organize but you need help reaching out to people then reach out to us i'm sure some of us have connections with the relevant people uh, and we can hopefully get them together on a panel that would be amazing um i will also say the nullability working group have been discussing organizing a cfp panel um i think with a proposal of stephen spaulding 
who I mentioned earlier, actually being the uh, the moderator of that discussion. So, yeah, definitely, I think this will be interesting for the audience to see. Awesome. Anything else on anyone's mind that we should cover before we wrap? All right. Well, um, just a quick half hour meeting today. Um, still good stuff covered. GraphQL JS as some um, pieces. Again, reminder, it's action there for folks to go check in, uh, review and add feedback. Um, both on the, the exports, uh, where you're using the exports, and also to make sure that we're getting bundle shaking done correctly. Um, a reminder on our call to action for the CFP, and then also uh, some open calls for maintenance and grant program proposals. Um, please share those around the folks that you know in your organizations. All right, folks, we'll wrap it there. Give everyone time back for their afternoons. See you all soon. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.